Hey everyone, Jack here and welcome to the Mindful Homestead Kitchen. saw yesterday's video then you know how miserable I was outside in the cold and the wind boiling off sap. Today my plan was to do the same thing however it's just as cold and windy outside so rather than spend outside boiling off sap um, the sap we have in the buckets right now is pretty much frozen the lines didn't even thaw today so saps not running so what I'm gonna do today is finish off the sap that we boiled yesterday um, normally hey Come here. So rather than be a glutton for punishment and do it all over again today, I am just gonna boil off and or finish off the sap that we boiled yesterday. Um, this is a relatively easy process. It's best done inside. Um, you can do it outside over an open flame if you really want to, but it's not, you wanna go down. The thing with doing it outside is you really want a well-controlled flame. <laughs> you want a well-controlled flame under your sap to get it to the right stage. You have to be pretty precise with it. Uh, we're gonna be looking to hit 219 degrees. And at that point, it's going to be syrup. It's pretty critical. If you don't boil your sap hot enough, uh, your concentration is not gonna be right and you could eventually grow mold and other bacteria inside your syrup over time. Uh, if you boil it too far, you'll have crystals forming in the bottom of your maple syrup when you store it. And while that's not the end of the world, it's syrup that you don't get to eat. It ends up forming a maple sugar at the bottom. So the tools you're going to need to finish your maple syrup off, you'll need a candy thermometer, sap filter paper, something to put your finished maple syrup in, you'll need a colander of sorts, and last but not least, you'll need your sap. That's been boiled down a good bit already, preferably. You know, it's not just a linear process that you do once and done. It kind of goes throughout the entire course of the season. But this is an ongoing process. There are days where I'll be finishing syrup inside while I'm boiling it outside. But we'll keep collecting sap as long as those trees are going. Um, once the buds pop out, that's usually when we stop. So as I mentioned before, the goal here is gonna be to get our sap up to boiling temperature and then take it up to 219 degrees Fahrenheit or 104 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna be using Celsius on this candy thermometer because the Fahrenheit scale is actually off. It's a pretty cheap candy thermometer, so centigrade measurement on this is actually more accurate but we'll get this set up on the side of the pan you want to keep an eye on it you'll also be able to see uh, the change in everything when you're starting to get up to that temp it's going to boil a lot more with finer bubbles is i guess the good way to put it you'll see it on the video uh, but there's some old timers out there that don't even use a thermometer a lot of the commercial guys will use a hydrometer um, where they'll actually test the viscosity of it more than test just the temperature itself uh, but they're using big commercial uh, evaporators so we'll set the candy thermometer up on the side so we can see it and we'll get the heat going on under this. You don't want to have your heat on very high just because at this point, because you're getting so high in sugar content, it'll be very easy to scorch this and burn the bottom of it. So lower and slower is always going to be better than just trying to crank on this. You know, you can always boil it a little bit longer at a lower temperature. Once you burn it, it's done. You're going to have a scorched taste of the syrup and nobody's going to want it. So we'll get this set up and uh, we'll get our heat turned on and wait for it to come up to temp. While we're waiting for the sap to come up to temperature, let's talk a little bit about that awesome backsplash that you see back there. Mallory over at Quebec Homestead had a video come out where she talks about a bunch of her unfinished projects. I don't think any homestead is without their unfinished projects. What you see here is the result of a kitchen remodel that has just failed to get up and off the ground. We love our kitchen. It's pretty great. However, ever since we moved in, we wanted to put an island in the center. We wanted to do new countertops. We wanted to either reface or paint all the cabinets that are here. And one of the things we wanted to do was replace the range. A couple years ago, actually about a year, it was a year ago this past Christmas, uh, the range that came with the house died and we needed to get a new one. So we bought an awesome new Whirlpool range and oven. Uh, I bought a beautiful piece of stainless steel 
for the backsplash and we bought this new stainless range hood. I thought things were gonna go awesome until we get into the nuts and bolts and there's an outlet right there. We didn't know that it was there before because there was a panel on the back of the old range. Didn't anticipate the outlet being at a non-regulation height. It's not really standardized, but normally they're much lower on the ground. Um, as it is, the plug for that barely reaches from our stove up to it. And as the rest of our house, the plug in this outlet is upside down. Upside down plug. Upside down plug. Upside down plug. So rather than cut a hole in the beautiful piece of stainless steel that I had just purchased to be the backsplash, um, we elected to just say, hey, you know what? We'll move that outlet when we do the kitchen remodel. Uh, we'll put up the backsplash the right way and things will just be great. It's a year and a half later now and still haven't started that kitchen remodel, but we'll get there one day. So this is the part where you really have to sit and be patient and watch it because if you're not, it could foam over really easily and then you'd lose everything, which nobody wants to do. I'm not one to cry over spilled milk, but I'll definitely cry over spilled maple syrup. As far as filter setup, I like to filter right into the jar that I'm gonna be keeping it in. So I just take my filter paper and I put it over top and then I use the ring, the standard mason jar ring to hold it in place so that I can filter through there. You can grab that filter paper from any place that sells maple sugaring supplies. If you're in a bind at home and you don't have the paper or you can't find it anywhere nearby, you can use a couple layers of cheesecloth, just doubled up and tuck it into the jar the same way using the band. Either way, you're gonna wanna filter your syrup hot. Just like most things, the hotter it is, the thinner the viscosity of it. And as soon as it cools down, it's gonna take a long time to go through whatever you use to filter it out. All right, so you can see our bubbles are getting tighter. We are getting pretty close. So probably any minute now. And we're gonna wanna pour this off. So if we look here, you can actually see that's the, uh, the niter that we filtered out. Not a lot, and again, it's not gonna hurt you, but it's more or less just a quality thing. So that's it right here. This is about 15 ounces or so of syrup uh, that we got out of boiling seven gallons of sap. This is the first sap of the season. It's really light in color. Uh, that has to do with the caramelization points and the different uh, sugar compounds that are in sap as the season progresses. Early on, the sugar compounds have a higher caramelization point, so you don't quite hit that temperature and it's, the sap stays lighter. Uh, later on in the season, the sap compound, or the sugar compounds in the sap, they have a much uh, lower caramelization point. So the sap you're gonna see later in the season is much darker. Uh, a little bit of flavor profile as well. The stuff later in the season is a little bit more, um, 
I don't know, I'd say maybe robust of a flavor. Uh, it's a little bit more fuller, like a slightly stronger coffee compared to a, a lighter roast. Other than that, we're gonna keep boiling throughout the year. Probably we'll show you a little bit of it in the vlog videos, but as for our how-to maple syrup, um, this is gonna be the last video in that installment. If you haven't seen those videos yet, click up here in the corner and we'll put parts one through four, uh, this being the fourth part up there. And if you haven't already, also go check out Homesteading with the Heberts and Lost Nation Homestead, and they have the rest of the New Hampshire Homesteaders maple syrup videos for this season that we did a collaboration on. If you have any questions on how you can make your own maple syrup at home, leave them in the comments down below. Other than that, thanks for watching this video and have a great day. Bye.